I have returned. Jesus! How long have you been there? You've kept me for a long time in your garage, <laughs> Miles. I'm sorry, Ryan. Today, we're gonna open up the strawberry wine. We're gonna taste it. We're gonna rack it. We're gonna do what needs to be done to make this a winner wine. I'm very excited. All right, this little setup here is just a colander and a bowl. And I'm gonna open this up, grab that bag of fruit and pulp, which has now been turned to mush. I'm gonna put it in here to help drain out some of that juice that what is now hopefully wine, put it back in, because I don't wanna waste anything. So I'm gonna open this real quick. Doesn't look that great, but that's okay. It, it will take, right now it's just hazy. It's all, it's all foggy. Not bad, not bad. So here you can kind of peer in here. It definitely has that red strawberry look. All right, take fruit out. Yeah, I don't encourage you to look inside in the bag because it's not gonna look good. Looks like a colostomy bag. <laughs> what is that? Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you after. <laughs> okay. I really don't, a colostomy bag. All right, it's probably really gross. Very. Okay. When you're old and you can't use the bathroom anymore, mm -hmm. they hook up a bag to you and everything runs into that bag and that's what that is. Oh. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'd imagine it does. But thankfully, it won't taste like a colostomy bag. <laughs> I don't know how a colostomy bag tastes, but I assume it tastes terrible. All right. Yep. Let's move that over here. The hydrometer, all it's going to do, it's going to take what's called a final gravity reading. It's mm -hmm. going to measure. It's going to measure the final density of our wine. Because remember, we took an initial density reading. Then we're gonna take a final density reading and the delta between those can be punched into or put into an online calculator to tell you how much alcohol is in here. So that's what we're doing. And hopefully all the sugar's gone, that's what I'm hoping for, and we're left with about 13% alcohol by volume. That little dripping sound you're hearing is the wine draining from the bag. It's definitely not one of us peeing <laughs> into our colostomy bag. <laughs> It was 0 0.990. Okay, what that means is literally all of the sugar has been fermented. 0 0.990 is slightly less dense than water. Now you may be asking yourself, we began with water and sugar, and even if all the sugar is now gone, how can you get a density of less than water? Well, that's because... Magic. That's right, magic. No, Al don't worry talking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> alcohol... <laughs> yeah, get out. Alcohol is less dense than water. So, if you start with water and then you add a bunch of sugar to it, you're gonna end up with a slightly less dense than water liquid, okay? So that's, that's what happened. We used up all the sugar, I'm thrilled. The taste of this, it's gonna be really dry. There's gonna be no sugar in it. You're not gonna get a lot of that fruit because fruit is mostly just sugar, but that's okay. That gives us options that we wouldn't otherwise have if this were a stuck fermentation. Alrighty, my trusty co-host Ryan is gonna pour a few samples off for us to taste at the end of this. Best I'm just gonna pour this back in here. It's so you are exposing it to some oxygen when you do this, but it's just a little bit, a little bit, not worried about it. So our starting gravity on this was 1.090 and it finished at 0 0.990, which I do believe is about an alcohol percentage of 13 to 14%. And I might actually be a little higher than that, which is awesome. This worked out beautifully. So what we're gonna do now, we're not gonna, I thought maybe we'd have to fix the stuck fermentation. We don't have to do that. So I'm gonna siphon this. We're gonna siphon we, this. Because we're a team. That's right. Into new containers. It's called racking. The process of siphoning wine into new containers, transferring liquid, racking. Add that to your vocab list. Oh, hi. Thanks for coming back and not exiting out of the video. Ryan, as a brief interlude, I want two more interesting facts about you. Now, I know that's going to be hard it's because you're hard. such a boring I'm person. so boring. Yep, yep. Now, to <clears> recap, <throat> last time it was you're born, or wait, you were born in Italy. Yes. And you grew up in Spain. Yes, I did. Give me, give me two more. Okay. I traveled to Belgium with Rotzi and we won a championship over there. Rotzi? Yeah. What's that? That is called the... Reserve Officer Training Corps. All right, mm -hmm. number yeah. four. Number four, um, I have a screw in my leg. 
Why do you have a screw in your leg, Ryan? Because I'm screwy. <laughs> All right. So, this is drained enough. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to pour in what we've got here. All right. Take this off camera. Day 41, and I'm still in Miles' garage. No one. Oh. Alrighty, we have everything in place for racking our wine. Now, why do we do that? Why? Because we want to get this wine into these containers to get it all off the leaser gunk that's accumulated at the bottom so that then over time gravity can pull down even more stuff and it can start to clarify, become a clear wine, and then we'll rack again and then probably bottle it. This is an auto siphon. Uh, there's a link in the description and you can buy one. What is the benefit of this is that you pump this a few times and the siphon, siphoning action starts. You don't have to suck on the end of it. Exactly. All right, so Ryan's going to be taking the lead on this. Mm. So go ahead. The key to siphoning is to have your original vessel elevated above your source vessel because gravity then can pull the liquid down. If they're at the same level, nothing happens. Elevator. Uh, uh huh, it does. I'm a siphoner, okay? I know what I'm doing. The other thing I'm going to be using is called a wine filler. It allows the liquid to flow when this little thing is popped out. Uh, I'm sorry, other way around. It allows the liquid to flow when this thing is popped in, but then when you pull it out, the liquid flow stops. And so it allows you to transfer from like container to container. And it's used for bottling. But because we're having two containers here, because there's more than a gallon in here, the gallon container, I'm going to be using two. Here we go, Ryan. Don't f*** it up. Um, okay. I have to do a couple times until it starts on its own. Now, the key to racking is in your secondary container, you want as little oxygen in here as possible, as little headspace as it's called, because that limits the exposure of the wine to oxygen. Oxygen at this point will strip away flavors, it'll ruin your wine. So you really want to get close up in there. That's a little bit more. That's pretty good. That's very little oxygen. Now on to container two. Ryan, would you look into the bucket and see how much wine we have left? I'm not that tall, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right, right we where have you stop. Like that much. Oh, okay. We're gonna have plenty to fill this. Okay, but actually, will you hold this? Yes. I need a new one. Day 42. I'm still stuck in Miles' garage. He won't let me out. He only gives me wine to drink. My liver hurts so bad. I just want some food. All right, I quickly got one more container because we have more wine than I thought we would have. But that's okay, this is cool. We're gonna have lots of strawberry wine. Yeah. Oh, there's so much gunk in this last one. Whatever. Say la vie, as they say in Spain. Mm, yeah, one of those foreign countries. All right, so what you want to do now is enclose these containers with a bung and an airlock. Now, could you get away with not using one of these and just closing it up? Probably, because the fermentation is done, all the sugar is done, the yeast have nothing to work with. But there is carbon dioxide gas naturally just locked away in here that over time will leave. That's called degassing. If this is closed, the pressure will build up. Will it do it to such an extent that they'll explode? Maybe not, but I, I would not take that risk. I would just get a bung in an airlock, fill it to the lines with sanitizer water. All of this stuff has been sanitized, which we talked about last time. So fill it with sanitizer water and then place them into the openings. So now what these are gonna do is they're gonna go into secondary fermentation or conditioning where all of the pulp and all of the stuff that's making it opaque right now will settle out over time. And then we'll rack again, and we'll rack as many times as we need, give it as much time as we need before we bottle. I'm not gonna bottle this until it's crystal clear. So now we're almost completely done here. We just want to taste it and see how it is at this stage. It's probably not that great because it's very gunky. Yeah, it has um, a lot of particles left in it, but... yeah. So what do, you, what do you smell, Ryan? I smell a hint of strawberry. 
So you'll know that we put raisins and we put lemon juice in here and a couple other things besides just the strawberry. So I'm interested to see how this comes out. That's what I'm smelling is the, the lemon. Maybe, yeah, yeah. I smell the, the like bitter citrusy. Mm hmm. All right. Definitely very dry. Yeah. Um, but I do taste the citrusy mm -hmm. of the lemon. I'm getting the acidity, mm -hmm. like that tang. Yeah. It's for me, the strawberry notes hit right at the beginning and then they fade out and mm -hmm. you're left with a lot of lemon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that jives. I, I agree with that one right there. Yeah. So <clears throat> where we go next time is in probably a month, maybe a little longer until it's really had a long chance to clarify. We will come back, probably rack again, and then we'll bottle. And then this saga will be done. So thank you so very much for watching. Once again, co-host. Thank, thank you, you very much for bringing me back. It of course. Very fun. This was a good time. So we appreciate you watching. Like, comment, subscribe, as usual. Bye-bye.